Well, it's 9-11, 9-1-1. I always thought that was interesting. Emergency. The, the day that everyone... I can't speak for everyone. I can, but I don't know how effective that would be. The day that I'll talk about how I feel about it. I worked at Ground Zero, you may or may not have known. I, uh, I worked at Ground Zero after September 11th, starting in October, like mid-October, I think, or early October, like, probably, yeah, like October 10th or something, or 15th. And I worked there for until, up until Christmas, and then I went home to Ohio for Christmas that year, like in December 22nd, and when I came back, there was no more. The job that I had was, I guess they probably just filled it. You know, I sat in an office uh, up next to the, the ground zero, next to the, the, the pit, this huge pit, the size of like three football fields side by side, I think, and so deep. You, I, I remember looking down on a, on a big crane like the crane neck went all uh, up really high, like one of these really big cranes where they have like the oilers on the back and the the guys that are driving it. And I was above it looking down and I thought, man, this is so vast. Makes me think I want to go to the Grand Canyon as a side note. Uh, I haven't been there yet, but I will go. So it... It was pretty humanizing to be there. A lot of people seem to be afraid of it or, or, or think like, oh, it's so horrible, it's so horrible. But I saw it. One of the guys, the, the construction workers said, they're not finding the people in the pile. The people are in the this muddy water that's running into the river. The people are on the bottom of our shoes because we've been walking in it. And when they would find body parts, they wouldn't find parts, they would find white bone, but it was like a twizzlery substance and it would be heated, melted, just that's all they would find. Everything else melted away. And when they found a fireman, they knew because the, the coat that they wore was heat resistant. And they would find the, the, the body part in the, the coat. And they would wrap it in an American flag and carry it down off the pile. I never saw it with my own eyes, but it happened while I was there. I can imagine it. I remember when they found that cross that they put up. Those orange, that garter. I remember when Britney Spears, I think, performed there. Uh, it. I also remember a couple days after 9-11, I lived in New York. I moved there September 5th. So I was there six days after I moved there is when everything happened. And then I remember reading uh, on CNN.com the transcripts from the plane that went down in Pennsylvania where Let's Roll reportedly came from. The transcripts of cell phone calls, 911 calls. And people said that there was an explosion outside of the plane and that white smoke was coming out of the plane. And then the plane went down. And that's a missile. That's the government shot the plane down because it was hijacked, and already the trade centers have been hit. It was in Pennsylvania. It was headed east. They shot it down, and then they lied about it and said they didn't know. They just made up a story of heroes. They lied about shooting it down because they were afraid of taking responsibility. That's what leads me to believe that they did not create 9-11. The government was responding to it or reacting to it. And they reacted pretty 
uncoordinately and I guess just there wasn't much coordination. It just was poorly executed because people, there was poor communication. But they didn't do it. They tried to fix it somehow. They shot it down. Out of, they were freaking out. I remember when Rumsfeld accidentally mentioned it. And he, I could tell he, he felt like he fucked up. Like he shouldn't have, he, like he was like, you saw in him that he knew he had said it and he knew no one else had said it and everyone agreed they weren't going to talk about it. And he just kind of went on. And that makes me completely believe, because of that, I completely believe that the government had nothing to do with creating it. They, they were reacting to these people that, I mean, you can call it their ignorance, their unwillingness to communicate with people that don't speak English, or you can take it upon yourself and call it your own ignorance for living such an egocentric lifestyle as an American citizen, if you're an American citizen. Because that's kind of been what's happened the last 50 years. Maybe 70, I don't know. It's just, it's easy to get caught up because there's so much money in this country. But there's other countries and people and languages. And our ignorance had brought this violent reaction. It became violent, horribly violent. But people have become much less ignorant and more aware since then. Extremely more aware. The whole concept of internet video, for the individual to be the news or the, the communication point, at any given point, it can be any person. So much has changed. People are becoming so much more aware since then. Oh, but it was our fault. I take it upon myself for my own playing video games. I wanted to just make a lot of money, be famous. Now I have a reason for being because I see what can happen when people are, are just decide to be ignorant. I got to go. I think this video is going to be uh, going to be kind of long. We're going to ground zero. I wore a, an air filter and a, and a hard hat. And I took the air filter to Burning Man, actually. It smelled like graham crackers. It was apparently the dead bodies or the chemical. Who knows? It was so destructive. It was so horrific. Horrific but awe-inspiring. We have to be aware so that it doesn't happen again. We, people pay very close attention to it, and I, I don't think it'll ever happen again. I think that we now are aware enough as a human race to prevent that kind of thing.